the Seacamp was one of those guns that, well, if you knew a lot about guns, you'd heard of a Seacamp. If you didn't, you had not. It was one of those pocket pistols that was really a trendsetter ahead of the concealed carry movement. I suspect that the Seacamp was a reaction to cheap little pocket pistols that didn't work very well. A fellow by the name of Seacamp said, I can build a really first class pistol with beautiful workmanship that would put all these others to shame. And he sat down, he came up with a, a little double action pistol, beautifully made in 32 caliber, which was in his estimation at the time, I think the most powerful caliber that you could pack into that small a pistol. These guns were made to a very high level of manufacturing quality. There was a good bit of handwork in them, but the bottom line is they were very well made. And for those uh, police officers and armed citizens who wanted a very high quality, extremely compact, very reliable backup gun in admittedly a marginal chambering 32 ACP, they looked no further than the Seacamp name. The Seacamp had some features that other guns didn't have. It was hammer fired. Uh, it had a flat hammer that if you look at the gun, you can't tell whether it's striker fired or hammer fired. But back in that era, just about everything was hammer fired. Uh, but it had dual nested recoil springs, which is a feature you see on a lot of small guns these days. Uh, the Seacamps were really kind of a pioneering design. The Seacamp was, was really interesting technically. It used a, a system called a chamber ring delayed blowback. So an annular ring cut into the chamber caused a momentary delay in the operation of the firearm so that gas pressures could lower to a safe level and the gun could open safely. Now, the thing about the C-Camp too is that it, it wasn't technically a self-loading design in which the action uh, recocked the gun. The trigger action itself is what recocked the hammer each time. So really it was a manually operated self-loading design. Their initial popularity was such that not unlike uh, Dirty Harry Smith and Wesson, there was quite a backlog at Seacamp. Uh, the guns cost uh, far more on the secondary market than they did at the retail market. Uh, because there was such a backlog to, uh, to get them manufactured. Uh, folks were paying uh, double, triple the value of them uh, just to get a hold of one uh, without having to wait. The price on the guns rose uh, steadily to the point where a C-Camp would be a $1,000 gun in some cases. Um, and, and even today, the originals are highly sought after. Now, there were uh, at least two companies that essentially uh, copied the design or put out very similar designs and so the necessity for a genuine sea camp diminished as time went on uh, and of course the company was uh, purchased uh, guns are still made to this day but sea camp it found a niche and that niche was very high quality very compact uh, sort of last ditch backup uh, self-defense firearm